te casó. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Mainly Outdoors. Today, oh, exposure, let's go. All right, so today, uh, I'm heading out to Grand Lake Stream, and I want to do some fishing there for some salmon as they run up the river to spawn. Uh, so it's going to be for landlocked salmon. And I'm super excited to do that. I've heard some great things about it, and this will actually be the first time that I've ever got out to fish it. And since it is bird season, I figured I would uh, go out on some of the woods roads and just drive and just drive the woods roads in order to get to Grand Lake Stream. But anyway, so I got to get out my shotgun and I'm going to drive this woods road until I make it to Grand Lake Stream. And if we see a bird on the way, I have myself some dinner. Shells. Fall colors are out. It's um, we're probably a couple days past peak here, but they are still pretty spectacular. It's such a great time of year to be out here in the woods. And I can't think of any better way to get to Grand Lake Stream than to take some back roads. All right, so we made it to the spot that I want to walk. I was looking for something that was both close to my campsite that I plan to stay tonight and also a good mixed stand of both hardwood and softwood because this year we've had a bumper crop of beech nuts and partridge love that. So I really think that they're hanging around these beech trees uh, looking for something to eat. And if we're lucky, I'll walk this road. Maybe we'll find one or two and I'll have that for dinner. But if not, then I'll have to figure out something else to eat. I know the partridge haven't been, people haven't been seeing that many and it really is, it's not a population issue this year. It's more of that there's so much food in the woods right now that they have no reason to come to the road to get clover. Uh, they pretty much only come to get some gravel if they can't find it somewhere else. So. We'll walk down this road and see what we can find. Yeah, so this is really a great spot. I mean, you can just see this whole line here. That's all beach. And then we got some mixed softwood, large gravel banks. And there's clover on the ground, but this year there's so much food in the woods that they really don't care that much about the clover, but that's okay. I mean, we do need a little luck, but you can see right here, uh, this is all scratchings where they dig up grub and gravel both these spots. So this time of year, you know that one's been here because this would be covered in leaves otherwise, but they've been scratching that up to get some grubs, so. There are birds here. It's more of a question of whether or not we happen to run into one. I just spooked one sitting here and he flew off this way before I even saw him. Hmm. Let's see if we can get him. It's pretty thick in here though. He'll fly before I get anywhere near him, but I might get a shot if I'm lucky. At least I saw one. Where did you go? Here somewhere, I know that. This downhill slope, he could have glided so far. Who knows? Bummer. What a bummer. They're very skittish down here, unlike up north. I'll take one poke down here. And then I'll keep walking. That's a good sign. I'm only about, about 10 minutes, 20 minutes in. Dang it. Okay, well, there's no way I'll find him in here. Not without a dog. Bummer. I was way back there, and he flew from behind here somewhere. Hmm. Okay, well, we saw one. That makes me feel a little better, but what a bummer that is. Keep going.
Are you kidding me? Why are they so skittish? <laughs> I never would have saw that one anyway. Maybe there's two. Oh, I'll take a quick peek. Big difference in downstate compared to up north. I mean, up north, a bird like that standing off the side of the road amongst all these bushes, if he would have sat still, I would have walked by. You never see a bird like that. But here, they're so skittish. I think maybe they get hunted a lot more. Well, they must. That sucks. Sitting behind all these bushes, or he was in this hole. Why couldn't you have just waited? Well, there's one. There's one. There it goes. Oh, wow, it flew so far. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, they're skittish. I've never seen anything like it. He flew straight up. I'm wondering if he's in one of these trees. This is crazy. Can't even get near these birds. Don't know how I'm gonna get one here. Walking is obviously the way to go because there's no way I'm getting near. I don't even expect to get one driving. Oh, I think I saw one. Jeez, I thought that was a stick. Honestly, I almost didn't shoot it because I thought it was a stick. Just happened to see this driving by. Where'd it go? There it is. No way. Oh my goodness, a brown tail too. A red phase, I think people call them. Crazy. Beautiful. Of course, that was a headshot. That was all I could see. I can't believe that. Cannot believe it. Well, we got one. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that we did that. Beautiful bird, and it's got a clean shot because all I could see was the head. It looked like a stick, so I was just driving by this spot right here. But yeah, I just driving by this spot. And I just saw something that looked like a partridge head enough that I didn't even back up to question it. Right in here, just saw a little, what I thought was a head poking up, and it was. So a lot of times I would just back up, you know, take a look, and be like, oh, stick, oh well. <laughs> but this time, I don't know what it was, I just had a feeling that that was a bird. And even when I stepped out, I don't know if you could tell on the GoPro, I was hesitant. I don't like shooting for no reason. I don't want to make a joke out of myself shooting a stick. <laughs> <laughs> but so anyway, I'm aiming at it and it's still, it wasn't moving. It looked like a stick to me. It's the first bird that doesn't fly. But man, we finally got one. Gorgeous bird. Oh, I'm gonna have to keep some of these feathers for tying up flies. But just beautiful, beautiful colors on this. This is a red phase. You see gray and then this is, I would say brown, but people call it red phase. Just so pretty. And they are delicious as well. Yeah, that's gonna make some good flies for fishing. And the meat is in perfect condition because I would show you the head, but yeah, YouTube wouldn't like that. Perfect headshot, not much left. <laughs> but yeah, we got one. Now I'm gonna go to my camping spot. We're gonna clean him. Mission accomplished. This 
is our camp for tonight. Nothing special, once again, it's just another dirt turnaround. Ah, so excited to get that bird. Really didn't expect to get one tonight. I would cook it tonight, but I probably have, let's see, yeah, I have about 30 minutes of sunlight and that's not enough time. Let me put you guys somewhere. So I would show you one thing. So last video I put out, uh, people were telling me a better way to clean grouse and I'd show you that, but it's for YouTube. <laughs> There's no way they would tolerate that. Um, but anyway, the idea is you put it on the ground facing towards you, you step on the wings, and then I'll pull up the feet, and that'll leave the breast and the wings attached. So um, it sounds like a super simple way to clean it. That's how I'm going to clean this one right now, uh, without showing you guys, unfortunately. So this is pretty much what you're left with. You have the breast and the wings. Really appreciate you guys suggesting that. I had not heard of this for some reason, but man, it works so well. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to clean it, but of course I took the wings off because tomorrow I'm gonna have it all ready. I've saved, of course, the breast, which doesn't have a single BB in it because that was a clean, clean headshot. And I kept the heart in it because I'm gonna cook that up tomorrow. And in addition to that, I last time I didn't mention this, but of course there's plenty of meat on the legs as well. And those are good eating, so I'm keeping both legs. And tomorrow, You'll have to stick around to watch me cook this grouse up. I have a cool recipe in store for it. So you'll have to wait till tomorrow in order to see me cook these up. It's gonna be pretty good. But anyway, it's getting dark out and it is time for me to just set up. This is what I'm gonna call camp. I'm just going to, I brought a sleeping bag and I'm going to, I just brought a sleeping bag. Oh. Oh, I just drove that whole way with my shotgun sitting right there. I'm an idiot. That's so stupid. Yeah, I left that right there. That is so dumb. Sometimes, I don't know. Wow, okay. Anyway, uh, thankfully I still have my shotgun. That would have been a fiasco. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be sleeping right in the back of my pickup. Super simple. Oh, just obviously I gotta take some stuff out first. If you're wondering what my sleeping arrangements are, I just put a sleeping bag in the back of my pickup. I even got a pillow to go with it. Keeping things simple, that way I can show up to a spot 15 minutes before it gets really dark out and just have everything ready to go and wake up early tomorrow and go fishing. So anyway, I think I'm gonna close out the video right here. Tomorrow I'm going fishing in Graham Lake Stream. Super excited to catch some of the landlocked salmon as they move up river there to spawn. Uh, and then in the afternoon, we're gonna take this partridge and I'm gonna cook up a dinner with it. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking around for this. Uh, I'll probably keep this a little short video on my travels out to Grand Lake Stream and doing a little bit of bird hunting or bird searching anyway. I got one, so I guess I can call it hunting now. But yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Today was kind of a roller coaster of emotions, but we're ending on a high note. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a good morning, evening, or night, whatever time it is when you're watching. And I will see you in the morning when we go fishing. Later.